transmission lines. It's like two wires. And you have your input voltage on one side, and several miles away, you have your output voltage. It turns out when you're sending an AC signal over transmission lines, we can't just say that the voltage here equals the voltage here. There are electrical characteristics that alter the signal as it travels. And we can model this as a series of inductor capacitor circuits. Gorgeous. Effectively, we can model a transmission line as an infinite number of infinitely small inductor capacitor pairs. And thanks to the impedance of these, the signal doesn't diminish as it travels. That's why we use AC in our power lines. A DC signal would experience resistive voltage losses. However, the signal is delayed a little bit each time it passes through one of these microcircuits. And we can see that here with our real-life theoretical model. From the input, the signal is going to travel across each of these inductors, and each of these inductors has a capacitor tying it to ground. So let's see what happens when I measure the voltage each step along the way. After the first inductor, there is a very, very slight delay. With each subsequent inductor, we find the delay grows more. At one point, it becomes so delayed that it's actually back in phase. Before once again falling further and further behind. Now we can note that this delay is also frequency dependent, as is almost anything having to do with an inductor capacitor circuit. The higher the frequency, the more delay.